So death number five, there needs to be a little bit of an explanation before I move on to death number five. Um, they find the shark and they capture it. And they want a live great white in captivity. And so they're like, okay, we're, we're going to train this. This is a wonderful facility. We can do this. And then um, Calvin Bouchard, the manager, says to put the fish, um, the great white, on display as quickly as possible and Kay didn't want that to happen because she knew that it hadn't accommodated to the setting yet so what ended up happening is that shark because it is moved to the other location ends up dying and that is death number five. Death number six is... And a lot of people who know this movie, may you may think I'm skipping some. I'm not. Because there's a lot of attack scenes, but nobody actually dies within those moments. So death number six is Philip Fitzroy. And he's trying to film the shark, which is now the shark's mother, which is 35 feet long, um, is coming after him. And he ends up getting s swallowed whole, like um, Marge, in two. But this time, we get to see inside the shark's mouth as it slowly chews him um, and squishes him. And we see blood rising. Oh, it's the best death scene in the movie. Um, death number seven is, um, Calvin Bouchard's nephew, Fred, and he gets eaten, um, like, right before the very end of the movie, kind of like how Bob was supposed to be eaten at the end of two, and Quint, how he was eaten right before the end of one. So, Fred gets eaten, it's like John chomp and we see blood like puffing out of the water um and we do see him inside the shark's mouth biting him and then he just falls down like he's clearly dead but the shark doesn't really spend that much time digesting him um and they notice that well mike and Kay, who are now underwater notice that Philip has a bomb in his hand, and um, because because he was fully inside the shark and was chewed to death, so they bend it all up and they're pulling at it. They finally latch it and they pull it, and this is death number eight, and it's the final death in the movie. The shark explodes, and then the jaws shoot out at you, um, because it's in 3D, of course. So, yeah, total, um, the shark eats five humans, um, and one fish. Calvin Bouchard gets one for moving the shark prematurely and Mike Brody gets one for killing the shark at the end of the movie. So now let's talk about the three act structure because every single thing in the Jaws phenomenon has a three act structure thanks to the initial book. Um, act one obviously begins at the very beginning of the movie and act one ends with them having captured the uh well no act one ends with the death of that first shark act two begins immediately after the death of the first shark and it doesn't end until nighttime after the main attacks where nobody dies in the daytime at SeaWorld. Um, that's all of Act 2. And Act 3 is from the nighttime to the very end 
of the movie. Alright, so now, is Jaws 3D a good movie? I don't feel like I am at full liberty to say because I have not seen it in an original context. I haven't really seen the initial version that we were supposed to see. But it it has a horrible reputation and I think it's undeserved. It is not as bad as people make it out to be. The shark looks the I mean, I think that the shark looks the most real in this movie. Um, I think some of the death scenes are the most chilling in the entire series and and you actually care about the characters. Go figure. It's um no, it's it's not it is I will say this, it is most definitely not a bad movie. Not bad. Um but yeah. Uh what else? Um rating, okay. Initial okay, movie rating out of four um, because it is a third entry, and we've seen it before, I actually would give it a two out of four. Um, it's not bad, but it's nothing great. It's just average. And for a sequel, um, because I've seen plenty of worse sequels, I can assure you of that. For sequel, I would give it three out of four. Um, and so that was Jaws 3D, um, and until next time, remember, this time, it's personal.